Reluctant Preppers provides educational awareness and commentary only. Opinions expressed do not constitute personalized financial advice. Viewers are encouraged to do their own research and seek qualified personal financial consultation before making investment decisions. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. You've heard us talk about the cannabis industry with several uh, market participants and industry insiders, as well as our personal interest of Melody and myself as chronic Lyme patients. But today we're speaking with a returning guest, Jerry Robinson, economist and trend trader about how to invest in the cannabis boom. Jerry, thanks for joining us again here on Reluctant Preppers. Oh, sure. You bet. Great to be here. I was quite curious as we planned this topic to hear your thoughts on it, because as a Christian economist, uh, I know that you, you bring a moral perspective to everything that you do in life, and that is one of the reservations that I had for some years before getting being willing to even address this topic in general on our Reluctant Preppers channel, or now our sister channel, HealingYourself.Life. But as my wife and I struggled with chronic Lyme disease and found more and more help outside of the modern medical system, but instead from natural treatment options. The CBD oil uh, was one of those that we really got aware of, starting with Dr. Ernie Murakami uh, out of British, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, and others who we've had on as well. So what got you involved in watching the cannabis industry, and what are your um, main uh, inclinations and insights that allow you to, to talk about that? That, that's a really good question. I mean, you know, you're right. I mean, I'm a believer in Christ. I believe in Christ. I've been a Christian, you know, for many years, and I'm an economist. And so when you think about cannabis, you tend to think of the taboo, you know, drug users, and it's, you know, it's a terrible thing. Uh, you know, but I think I think a lot of our view of cannabis really is re is related to our culture and to our time. Uh, for example, I mean, if you look throughout history, cannabis has been used th uh, for industrial purposes. It's been used for medical purposes and, of course, always for recreational purposes. But, you know, for example, speaking of the industry, industrial use of cannabis, cannabis plants been used for millennia to create rope, to create paper, to create clothing. I mean, there's 25,000 known uses for hemp. Industrial and, hemp, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and until 1883, almost 90% of all the paper in the United States was made with hemp. You know, until about 1937, 90% of all the rope and twine was made with hemp. You know, both George Washington and Thomas Jefferson grew hemp on their plantations. Uh, in 1619, the Jamestown Colony in Virginia enacted laws ordering farmers to grow hemp. The Gutenberg Bible was printed on hemp paper. The original King James Bible was printed on hemp paper. Uh, you know, Henry Ford built a car out of hemp. Uh, so, I mean, when we when we think about history, we see well, what's what changed? I mean, how did this plant suddenly become so you know uh, you know so forbidden and so taboo in our modern era? And as I went back and I began to study that, I was actually very surprised. Uh, there was a process of, uh, of uh, it was a really slow but steady grind where cannabis slowly became illegal. And this really began, you know, back in the 1930s. There was actually a 19, uh, I believe it was 1937 uh, uh, act that was passed that basically uh, made the consumption, public consumption of cannabis it attached penalties to it. Uh, and it, those penalties, by the way, really didn't become really significant until the 1950s. But when I went back and I began researching about cannabis, what I discovered was the fact that this was actually, uh, and I, I don't know how to say it any other way, it was a very xenophobic and racist kind of law that was passed. Well, I'm going to give you a quote. This is from a man by the name of Henry Anslinger. He was the first commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcot Narcotics. And this was his statement before the Congress back in 1937. I'll quote it to you. This is him speaking in front of the Congress. Quote, marijuana is the most violence-causing drug in the history of mankind. 
most marijuana smokers are Negroes, Hispanics, Filipinos, and entertainers. He goes on to say that reefer, this is a quote, reefer makes the darkies think they're as good as white men. The primary reason to outlaw marijuana is its effect upon the degenerate races. Now, that, that kind of language is not unusual. In fact, if you study cannabis laws as they began to, to crack down in the 1940s and the 1950s and the 1960s, even in the 1970s, it became disproportionately targeting minorities. And so what I really found from these laws was that it was not really some sort of fear of morality that they were worried about. It was actually quite a racist law. And I don't know how to be any more clear than that. I mean, it was ex everything that I read was just very, very clear that this was really a movement against uh, Mexicans and against, uh, you know, uh, as they call them, Negroes, right, or black people. I mean, this was this was very overt. And I think you and I today living in 2019, you know, we're seeing the thaw of these regulations. But we still live with some social stigmas that are attached to them. Uh, we most people are still living in fear, uh, illegal fears, uh, embarrassing police encounters or massive fines or even harsh pr prison sentences that can be involved with this plant. But what's interesting is, is if you actually look at the federal government's uh, scheduling of the FDA, you'll find that marijuana uh, cannabis, if you will, uh, sits at the schedule one level, which is where the, the government also places heroin and LSD. So they basically the FDA schedules different drugs and they say schedule one, schedule two, schedule three and schedule one are the considered drugs with the highest potential abu uh, for abuse mm -hmm. and have, and have no accepted medical use. And they, they put marijuana right there along with LSD and heroin. Now, this is besides the fact that marijuana has has really you know killed no one over time. And in fact, uh, you you could even find that if you look at Schedule Two, you'll find things like crystal meth and cocaine and PCP. And we we start to think about even the opioid epidemic here in the United States, where it's really bizarre how you can you know you can go to a legal drug pusher like a doctor, and he can he can give you something that can kill you. But when it comes to growing a plant, you know, it's prohibited. And so I, I think I think the morality is really subjective. The morality is really based upon what time frame you're living in. Uh, so if we go back 100 years or 200 years, you would find that people use cannabis in their medicines. And these people would call themselves Christians, just like you and I would call ourselves Christians. So I think it I think it depends on what kind of propaganda you've been exposed to that determines how you view this plant. Uh, we also have to realize that as a plant, uh, you know, this, this, uh, you know, cannabis plant has a couple of different, or has many different, uh, acids that it creates or components that it creates. And there's two really primary ones, uh, primary ones that we really want to focus on. And that's THC. And that's the one that's psychoactive. It makes you feel high, but there's also the CBD, which is that's actually the uh, the non psychoactive uh, mm -hmm. deriva derivative, and it doesn't get you high. But if you look at the actual medical benefits of both THC and CBD, you'll find they're off the charts. And so once again, it it seems as if, and I think you can probably testify to this that the medical community, and I'm not slamming the docs out there. I know there's a lot of great docs who are really trying to help people. But the truth of the matter is, is whenever I get sick or whenever I have a problem and I go down to the local, you know, MD, all he's going to do is, and we are, we all know this, he's all, all he's going to do is he's going to give me prescription drugs. And there's so many different natural remedies that exist. And CBD oil has already been proven uh, to be an anti-inflammatory, to be, to be an appetite stimulant. It's been proven to be an anti-psychotic. It's been proven to be uh, and, uh, anti-diabetic. It's been proven to be antibacterial. And when I say proven, what I mean by that is I mean proven. Uh, there was actually a report put out back in uh, 2017 called The Health Effects of Cannabis and Cannabinoids. And it was put out by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. It was a landmark study that reviewed more than 10,000 different scientific abstracts published since 1999. And it found evidence to support that patients who were treated with cannabis or cannabinoids were likely to experience or more likely to experience a significant reduction in pain symptoms. They found help for multiple sclerosis. They found 
uh, help for other kinds of chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. And that's just based upon the limited amount of research they were able to do because any any uh, research outfit that tries to research cannabis in this current environment faces defunding from the federal government. So it's been a real big crackdown that has, quite frankly, racist roots, xenophobic roots. Uh, you know, if, if we applied the same laws that we have now to George Washington, we'd have to throw him in jail. You know, if we if we applied the same laws we have now on cannabis to Thomas Jefferson or to the pilgrims, we'd have to throw them in jail. So it all depends upon you know, where you live in time uh, is how, how you would view this uh, particular plant. But for me, I realize that this plant can be abused. I also know that the, the coffee plant can be abused. I know that there's many other plants that can be certainly abused. But many other plants are much more addictive and many other plants are much more lethal than cannabis. And so therefore, if it really boils down to protecting people and making sure that they're not going to kill themselves – then maybe we should shut down the liquor stores because as right now, uh, it's legal. I mean, it's le right now I can walk down to the liquor store and I can buy myself enough liquor to kill myself and die in a ditch on the way home and nobody cares. It's completely legal. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, and it, they would say, well, you shouldn't do that, but there's, it's completely legal. Whereas with cannabis, if I were to use that, I'm going to be thrown in jail. And, it won't kill me, and I can't even consume enough of it to to kill me or to do anything majorly, you know, to, to hurt myself. So, it, we, I think I think this the, the realization of of all of this is coming to fruition, and I think from an investment standpoint, we have an incredible opportunity, because as people come to their senses and they realize, now wait a minute, why is alcohol legal and cigarettes are legal, but cannabis, which doesn't you know cause any of these similar uh, complications. Why is it illegal? And it's that moment in time that we live in right now. Imagine being able to go back to say the 19, well, right before the time that prohibition was ended right. and, and being able to invest, you know, say in Anheuser-Busch or being able to invest in a beer company. I mean, imagine the shift that's going to take place. And so again, I think, let me just address one more thing before I let you move on. Uh, it, you mentioned the the uh, the morality of it, and there's been no doubt. I, I've certainly thought about it. I've struggled, you know, in my mind. I thought, you know, is this really something that I would want to expose myself to? And I think for people who have a problem with with uh, cannabis, uh, you know, a they should do some research on their own to see if what I've said is true, to make sure to confirm what I have said is true so far on this on this podcast. But also, they can also think about the CBD uh, component of cannabis. So. There's many different companies. You don't have to invest in companies that produce the THC psychoactive uh, component. You can focus upon companies who strictly focus upon the CBD side, and nobody gets high from that. There's, there's really, I can't even imagine what kind of moral issue someone could have with CBD, um, aside from the fact that it's illegal, right? And I think, in, but except for the fact that that recently changed in 2018 with the new 2018 hemp law. Uh, that was passed, the farm bill that was passed, hemp became legal uh, for, the, you know, for the first time in a long time. And so here in the United States, I mean, you can really invest in CBD companies. And one of my favorites right now is Charlotte's Web. It's, it's a, a Canadian-based company uh, that was started by the Stanley Brothers. Uh, and they were helping a girl by the name of Charlotte Figgy. That's where they got their name. She was a young epileptic who was suffering from Dravet syndrome. syndrome. And when her parents found CBD oil, they found relief for their daughter, and they, they didn't have to take these harmful pharmaceutical drugs. They could actually use something natural. And so, you know, Charlotte's Web is just one example of a company that, that we own. And this company has more than 3,000 retail locations nationwide selling its FDA-registered uh, CBD oil. And we see, we see a, a large runway uh, moving forward for this kind of uh, th these kinds of therapies that are much more natural than the big pharma solutions. And uh, if you could take us further into what options people have available to them to consider if they want to participate in investing in the cannabis boom. Well, it really, as we said, you can really kind of focus on a on a few different kinds of companies. I mean, there's several different kinds of companies here. Uh, in this particular space. The first thing you want to do is you want to do your own due diligence. And you really want to take a look at, you know, 
uh, when you're looking, when I say due diligence, I mean, look at the companies that are out there. You know, there's a few different areas you can invest in. You've got recreational uh, companies like Aurora Cannabis uh, is a perfect example of uh, recreational you know, cannabis. Now, some people say, man, I don't want to be involved with that. Well, you could focus maybe on the medical side, right? You'd have a company like Emerald Health Therapeutics that is on the medical side. Or maybe you say, I want to focus on the CBD side. Well, that would be a company like Charlotte's Web, as I've mentioned. Now, these are companies that I personally own, in full disclosure. I'm just telling you some companies that I, that I have researched, mm -hmm. that I have found. Uh, then you can also find the companies that don't even touch uh, the, uh, the cannabis plant. Uh, these would be kind of your pick and shovel plays. I mean, so think of companies like Scott's miracle grow, uh, which people have long known as, you know, cr creates great soil. Sure. They create, they create, uh, that special magical, uh, you know, that chemical that you can put into your plants and help them grow quicker. Well, Scott's miracle grow is, you know, growing, uh, due to a lot of cannabis growing demand. And so Scott's miracle grow is a tangential way uh, to play, or you could even play some of the packaging. You know, in cannabis, uh, in particular, packaging is very, very important. It has to be childproof. It has to have, you know, certain kinds of, uh, uh, you know, kind of regulations that it has to pass. So you can think of pick and shovel plays like that. You can also think of companies that aren't even in the cannabis space, but they're investing into companies that are in the cannabis space. Companies like uh, Constellation Brands, or even Coca Cola which has been talking about getting involved with some sort of CBD infused, uh, you know, uh, drinks and whatnot. There's also an ETF, uh, that's known as the ETF MG alternative harvest ETF. It's ticker symbol MJ. That's probably a really good first place for many investors to start just to go and take a look at that website or look up that particular ETF and drill down and see what kind of stocks are actually owned within that ETF. And it shows you kind of the idea of, where you know, where the top investors are really looking um, and so the you know there's ETF so there's so many different ways to play this particular space but I want to stress that you don't have to play it just simply as the psychoactive you know side of the plant there's so many different ways to play this uh, industry you reminded me when you were talking about this aspect of, of different uh, ways that you can participate in this growing industry without doing that uh, back in the dot-com boom I remember UPS coming out and saying hey guys we're the we're the uh, stealth uh, dot-com company because everybody who orders something we're the ones who <laughs> deliver it <laughs> sure exactly they, they they've been huge beneficiaries of uh, you know online marketing and and uh, online retail sales uh, if people want to find out more of your guidance and uh, again, just we don't, as a channel, give personalized financial advice and your your education, your perspective, so that people can gain. Where can they find out more? Yeah, let me stress that too. I'm not an investment advisor. People should not invest based upon anything that I say. Uh, they need to do their own due diligence. I'm simply sharing my own information that I've I've gleaned, and also sharing some of the things that I've actually purchased. Um, but as far as if you want to actually learn more, we've, you know, especially if you're interested in the history of this stuff, we have put together an incredible package on our website that you can go and check out. Just go to followthemoney.com forward slash cannabis. And there we are going to provide you with our report. We have a 2019 investment report. It's a cannabis investment report, 20 page uh, PDF. It's colorful, filled with tons of information. And it'll help you, especially if you're new to this space, to learn what you need to know to be able to cash in. This market is going to be extremely big, and it's hard to it's hard to overstate how large this market could actually be once the black market morphs into a, an actual into a legal market. The demand could be much larger than we even realize. So uh, followthemoney.com forward slash cannabis. You can get the report there. We also provide you a chart book of all of the stocks that we like. And then we also provide you with a 90-minute master class video where I take you through the ins and outs of the, the cannabis industry, talk about all these different ways you can, you can be involved. And then we even walk you through how to buy your very first cannabis stock. So even if you've never purchased a stock before, this video will show you everything that you need to know to get started in this space. So I would just say followthemoney.com forward slash cannabis is the place to go. Thanks, Jerry. We've been speaking with Jerry Robinson. He is a economist, trend trader, and founder of followthemoney.com. Jerry, always appreciate you joining us here on Reluctant Preppers. It's my pleasure. Thank you. They say the stock market crashed today. Yeah, 
I heard that. Sounds like people's retirement accounts and savings accounts are going to get bailed into the banks. Yeah. Looks like pension plans and social security are going to get suspended too. I know. Sure, I'm glad we decided to put our money into gold and silver instead. Me too. Get your first ounce of silver at spot price and free shipping on any order over $99 at sdbullion.com rp. Hey, Reluctant Preppers. If you haven't heard, we've already started our monthly one ounce U.S. Silver Eagle thank you gift to one active Patreon subscriber each month, signed by your host, Dunnigan Kaiser. And you don't want to miss out on that. Please help us grow by subscribing today at patreon.com slash reluctantpreppers.